Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Reddit Repairs, the series where I go through subreddits looking for people with problems with their PCs and giving my input on things that might fix it, have I come across it before, and generally things that they can try. So without further ado, let's get into our first problem. So we've come across uh, this user, um, he's playing games and his PC monitor goes black and the fans go super loud when he's gaming. This sounds like to me his GPU is crashing. It might be a bit difficult to diagnose why it's crashing. The steps I would take here, first of all, is definitely check the temps. Uh, download MSI River Tuner. I've said this in my previous video. Have an on-screen display of the temperature of the GPU, CPU, and play the game and see if your GPU temps are anything above 90. I say anything above 90, I mean that wouldn't really cause the PC to crash but it's something to look out for as maybe there may be a spike in power which causes the GPU to crash. A couple of troubleshooting steps after this I would do if it's not the temperature of the GPU is definitely reinstall the graphics card drivers. The best way to do this is download a piece of software called Display Driver Uninstaller DDU. You can find it on a website which I will link in the description. Run that, completely uninstall all your device, uh, video device drivers and then reinstall them from the NVIDIA website. See if you still get crashing um, and then go from there. Another thing he doesn't state it in this post but it could be an overclock that he's applied to his graphics card or CPU undo the overclock, test, see if your screen still crashes and goes black. I would also test the PC at uh, stock RAM speeds, so turning XMP off just in case that's causing anything weird. It doesn't really sound like a RAM issue to me, but it's worth trying everything that you have at your disposal as this is part of troubleshooting, figuring out what or outline what part is the problem and what's causing it and then trying to resolve that part. If all else fails, you may have to go down the route of getting a new graphics card or borrowing a new graphics card that you can test if it does the same thing. I stress everyone to do their own troubleshooting as well, don't take what I'm saying as gospel. Still do your own testing, these are just some things that you could try to try and fix this. If all else fails or if none of the steps you can come up with works, you can always try and borrow a graphics card from a friend or if you have a spare one lying around and just testing just to see if you have any problems with that. If you have no problems with another graphics card, then it may be that your the problem lies within the GPU itself and it's a hardware fault and you may need a GPU. This isn't really a fix, but it's more of advice that I can give to people who are looking to build their own PC. I see a lot of questions asking for tips on what GPUs and CPUs and RAM to buy. And a lot of these can be done just by searching up the builds on YouTube. What you can do is you can look at what budget you've got you can look at graphics cards in that price range and if you just pop over to YouTube and type in i7 10700K with RTX 3060 graphics uh, benchmark, you can watch videos on plenty of games that will show you the benchmarks at different settings. Do your own research, find out what you're happy with because what you might run into is someone's preferences are different to yours. You might be fine with running it at 60 hertz on a 1080p screen Others might like 120 hertz, so they'll be biased on giving you graphics cards that maybe you don't quite need and you can save some money and spend it somewhere else. So the best thing you can do here is find the GPU that you want. Just type it into YouTube. Benchmark, I can show you right now actually. So here, I literally just typed in my configuration, i7-7700K, RTX 2080 benchmark. And here I've got plenty of videos with my setup showing me specs and what kind of performance I can get and I can then make the decision if I want to get an RTX 2080 or if it's slightly out of my budget or I don't need to get that much FPS because I only have a 60 hertz screen, I can find a different um, different GPU and, and save some money. As I said, put some money in somewhere else where maybe you can alleviate a bottleneck maybe in the future. A little bit more advice, technically kind of a fix as well. Uh, this user here is asking, is dual channel RAM or is this dual channel RAM and does the RAM sticks, not cards, sticks, need to be in single channel to improve game performance. The answer to this is if your motherboard supports dual channel RAM, which pretty much all new motherboards do, 
you always want to run your RAM in dual channel, especially if you've got a Ryzen CPU, which I can see in his uh, next to his name there, he's got a Ryzen 5 5600X. Ryzen CPUs love the speed of RAM to be as high as possible. So XMP is great with Ryzen CPUs. In this screenshot, sorry for the squeaky chair, in the screenshot we can see that he's got both of his RAM sticks in channel A and channel B. Most or normally with motherboards you'll want the one of the RAM sticks in the far right slot and the other one in the second slot. Again the best thing to do here is to look at your motherboards manual to check what slots your RAM sticks need to be in or what the preferred slots are for um, this motherboard I, I'm saying slots sorry the correct term is dims but in order to get XMP working it's slightly different or it's in a slightly different location for all motherboards but it's generally the same go into the motherboard and uh, the motherboard BIOS sorry and you turn on XMP that simple uh, for Ryzen based CPUs um, or Ryzen based platforms it's DOC I believe off the top of my head might have to double check that I'll um, put the whole thing up on the screen if I'm wrong what it's actually called but once you've got that enabled um, you should be good to go and your RAM's running in XMP and you'll be kind of using the speeds that you've bought or the, what the RAM is um, advertising sorry I can't think of the word uh, a lot of people will buy RAM sticks at 3200 put them in their PC, uh, PC and then they'll come on Reddit and go why is my RAM only running at 2133 megahertz? It's because you don't have XMP enabled. Here we have a user who's having problems with their PC shutting down after installing a new SSD. This one sounded very weird to me when I was reading it and then I got to the very bottom where he said that he was in the bus and the CPU was nearly running at 100 degrees. So straight away, there's your problem. That's why your PC is shutting down. It's overheating when you're trying to open your VMs and it's shutting itself down to avoid damaging itself, damaging the components. Um, I can see here he said that the cooling system is all working. It may, well, <laughs> there's either two things here. If it's a custom loop that you've set up and you can see that the pump is working, I check that there's no blockages anywhere or you've knocked something while installing the SSD. Sounds like to me maybe the cooling plate, uh, sorry, cooling plate is not making contact with the CPU properly, which is why you're getting these incredibly hot uh, temperatures. If you have an AIO, it, again, it might be worth it checking that you haven't knocked anything and that the block is making proper connection with the CPU. It'd be really weird that the block would stop working after installing a new SSD, but double check that your pump is still working and pumping water to the CPU and then to the radiator. The best way to check this is just have the PC on long enough for the pump to start uh, start flowing water and just put your hand up against the block and just see if you can feel a slight vibration or put your hand on the tubes and see if you can feel a slight vibration. You're saying your water cooling is working. I'm not 100% sure because your CPU then would not be at 100 degrees. Yeah, this guy, uh, this guy's thinking what I'm thinking. <laughs> this person wants to know how much rough power usage his desktop uses at idle. Uh, actually, desktop, maybe laptop, one or two. Uh, the best way you can do this, or the way that I'm thinking of off the top of my head, is downloading a piece of software called Hardware Monitor. I'll uh, put the link in the description uh, for this. Uh, I'll drag this over to the screen now so you can see. Uh, so using Home Monitor, it tells you all sorts of information. Um, but if we scroll down, for example, I can see that my CPU is using this much wattage and you can see the max and the min. Uh, from here, you can make a, uh, an estimate of how much it's using idle. If I scroll down, my GPU tells me the power. I don't think it doesn't look like RAM or my hard drives or SSDs tells the power. So this might not be the best. There may be some other ways, but this is one way you can check 
roughly how much both the two top components are using. Probably the best way, but will cost you a tiny bit of money, would just be to buy a wattage meter, have that plugged in where your PC is plugged in, and then you can monitor how much wattage the PC is using. But again, it's going to cost you a little bit of money. And that does it for this episode of Reddit Repairs. Uh, the last one that I made was around 20 minutes long. I wasn't trying to make it that long. I was more trying to go for 10, 15 minutes. If you do like slightly longer videos, uh, please let me know in the comments and I will try and make them a little bit longer. Hopefully some of these things in this video have helped you troubleshoot your problem or hopefully it's been a bit interesting and you've learned a few things. Again, if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe press the like button, leave a comment and let me know and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Layers.